Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Fundamentals of Programming. This is going to be the first uh, lesson, and it's uh, with this little series of videos, we're going to be talking about the fundamental programming concepts that you need for all languages. When we really get to the programming, uh, we will be using Python. So if you want to learn some Python, this will be, uh, these series of videos will be a good resource for you. But today, the first thing I want to talk about, because it is the very, one of the very fundamental things to all of computing, is just talk about data types. And the first thing I want to talk about is just, uh, you know, why do we even care about data types? Because data, I'm sure you probably almost, your eyes glazed over a little bit when I just mentioned data types. It uh, sounds so boring. But the thing you need to realize is that data to a computer is just a bunch of ones and zeros. So it, those are known as bits. And those bits are how the computer processes information. So at the fundamental core, a computer, all it is, is a bunch of logic gates oriented in a certain fashion. And what those logic gates do is take in bits, ones and zeros, and perform operations on them. So all a computer does is takes in billions upon billions of these bits and spits out information in a way that we want to see. Now the problem is that to us, humans see data as base 10, which is decimal numbers, characters and words. So the computer sees it as binary here, but we don't really read binary, at least most of us don't read binary. We like numbers that are base 10, decimal numbers, we like characters like you know, letters and words. We, that's what we see. So when we try to read a uh, binary, we kind of get a little bit confused. Now this is where data types come in. Because data types tell the computer what the data means to us. So that when we give the computer a piece of data, it, it makes it uh, into binary. And then when it pro after it's done processing it, it gives us back in the way that we want it you know, maybe a base 10 number or character or word. We don't want the binary form of a, of a word, right? That would just look ridiculous. So we need the data types to allow the computer to know what we want after it's done with it. So what are data types? In a nutshell, they're just a classification of data informing the computer how the programmer wants the data to be processed and returned. So obviously there are certain types of data that will be uh, mathematically changed depending on what you're doing and they will be uh, returned in a certain way depending on what type of data it is. So there's a couple different types that we're going to be talking about. These are the fundamental ones, the very basic ones. Uh, when you go into some more, you will, uh, more types about data. There's a lot more to it, but this is the basic. So the first one is integers and as you can see that's like any whole or real number um, without a decimal point. So that's when you would need a floating point. And we'll talk a little bit more about in detail in all of these. Then there's also a Boolean, which is just true and false. Characters, which are individual symbols or, uh, or letters. And there's strings, which are a sequence of characters. And then there's composite data types, which are a combination of multiple data types. And those are come in the form of arrays, lists, and there are other composite data types that we will not be discussing. So. Let's go ahead and go into a little bit more in detail about each of these different data types. The first one I want to talk about um, is the one that's very commonly used, and that is just an integers. Now, as I said before, integers are just positive or negative real value whole numbers, so you don't have any irrational numbers like, you know, pi or, you know, exponentials. So, obviously, it's a real number, whole number. I hope you know what an integer is. So. The first, now integers come in various sizes. And this is another thing I want to point out and why data types are so important. Because with data types, you can specify how big that, uh, that piece of data is. So it gets really important when you're trying to keep your program as small as possible. So that if you're, if you're using really big data types, your program is going to get slowed down. So you want to use the smallest data type possible with the numbers that you're going to be having. Um, in Python, this isn't going to be as important, but in languages like C and C++, it is very important that you keep track of the size of your integer. Otherwise, you can have a whole bunch of issues. So the first uh, type that I'm going to talk about is just a 4-bit integer. And a, a, this int is just short for integer. It's very common. Uh, this is commonly referred to as a nibble, and it use, is used to hold a single digit. Now, if we were to break it down, 4 bits of information could store 
um, 0 to 15 would be the maximum number with four bits. If it was unsigned, signed would be negative 8 to 7. So you can see why it's usually a single digit. Um, and then next up, we have an 8-bit integer, which is commonly referred to as a byte. And unsigned, that goes from 0 to 255, or negative 128 to 100. That should be 127. That's my fault. And if you're wondering why they're not evenly distributed, um, that is because we have to include 0. 0 is a number, and it is a very, very important number. Um, it's commonly referred to as uh, the computer's second favorite number after 1. And that's a joke because it's binary. Anyways, moving on to the next size. It's a 16-bit integer. Now, as you can tell, we're getting bigger numbers here. So unsigned, we can go up to 65,535, and then signed, negative 32,678 to 32,677. Now, that's with 16 ones and zeros, 16 bits. We can store these numbers. So as you can tell, you need to be careful about how, what type of integer you're using. Um, otherwise, you might run out of you know, your number, if you were trying to store a, the number 300 on an 8-bit integer, it's going to have some issues. It'll wrap around and it won't be the same number because it can't store that big of a number with 8 bits. You need more bits to store bigger numbers. Each bit is basically adding more and more information and make, allowing you to store bigger and bigger numbers. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is just a 32-bit integer, and this allows you to go up to 4.3, 4.2, billion um, and also negative 2.1 to positive 2.1 billion. Now, um, this is a common, very common, uh, if you ever see this, this is the max score usually in a lot of video games. And that is just because that is the, uh, the highest positive number that you can store with a 32-bit integer, which is very common um, in early gaming systems and most games, honestly, because that variable is stored as an integer and that integer can only go up to a certain maximum number. So commonly, that maximum number is either 4.2 billion or 2.1 billion. So if you see that number, that's what that number is related to. So what if you don't want to store a real valued whole number? Well, you're going to need, if you had a decimal point, you're going to need something called a floating point. A floating point is used when you want to store a value that is not a whole number. So something like 1.5 or 3.1415. If you have a decimal point, you need a floating point. Now, a floating point trades the range of an integer for precision. Now, what that means is that we are basically, if we were going to look at this example, 65,535 needs the same number of bits as storing 65.535. Because the reason for that is that the number of bits is determined by how many digits you are trying to store in the decimal system. So the conversion. Um, remember this 65,535, that was a, the biggest number for a 16-bit integer. Well, 65.535 would be the biggest number for a 16-bit floating point if you had three decimal points. So essentially what you're doing is you're trading the number of digits to the left of the decimal point for the numbers on the right of the decimal point. Right? We, so right here on this first example, 65,535, we don't have any numbers or any digits to the right of our decimal point. But here we have three. So we traded having three to the left for having three to the right of the decimal point. And that's basically uh, a rule of thumb for floating points. We're just trading the range of an integer for more precise numbers so that we can have a more accurate value than a whole number might give us. So those are the two probably the most useful uh, mathematical or number-based uh, number data types. Um, next up is a pretty useful one, is a booleans. Um, and those are just true or false data values, on, off, things like that. Um, they're useful when you have only two outcomes. And uh, they're named after this guy, George Boole. And he is a very, very, very fundamental um, piece of what made computers possible. He founded what's called Boolean algebra, which really governs the logic behind how computers work and how they process information. So if you're interested in George Boole, I recommend you look him up and read a little bit about that. Um, but Boolean logic is, is the fundamental, um, really the fundamental math behind computers. So the next one is characters and strings. Now we have these because we don't always want to store numbers. Right? Sometimes we want to store words or letters. So these, that's what a character and strings do. They allow us to store letters or words. Now, they're always stored in a specific order. Now, that's why 
normally a string is called a string is because when you have a string, you have point A and point B on a string, and there is always something in between. It's in a specific order, kind of like a string. So one thing to note is they're always inside quotations, and they cannot be mathematically manipulated. So you cannot, I mean, you can't mathematically manipulate the word blue. You can't times blue by red. That's not a thing. Blue times red is not, I don't know, black. It doesn't work that way. You can't multiply words. The same thing with computers. If you store something as a character or a string, they are no longer mathematically manipulated. So some examples would be like the string name Bob. So they're in a specific order, B-O-B. -B. That's why it's called a string. Um, if you manipulate that order, obviously it's going to be a different string, right? Then we have a character grade equals D. So if your grade was D, it would be a character and D. Notice these are inside of quotations. So again, characters and strings are used to store either letters. Characters are for storing individual letters, and strings are for storing a sequence of letters. Then we have composite data types. Now, composite data types allow us to store multiple var values into in one va variable. So that's really, really useful. There are two types that I'm going to talk about today. So there's an array, which is a combination of values of the same data type that are all unique values. And they're not repeating. So you don't have 1, 1, 5, 7, 8. You have 1, 5, 7, 8. There's no repeating values. And then another type is called a list, which is a combination of values usually of the same data type in most programming languages. However, in Python, they can actually be of different data types. So that's actually really useful. So we'll be using lists, um, allowing us to store data of different types in one variable, which is going to be nice. And uh, with lists, you can also repeat the same valuable or the same value multiple times. So if we were to look at an example, uh, oh, one other thing I want to mention is that each element is assigned a number based on its position. Now, this is really commonly referred to as its index. Um, and in computers, the first index is always 0 and increases by 1 from there. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, not 1, 2, 3, 4. So it starts on 0. That's the first position in computers, right? It thinks in zeros, thinks in binary, zero is included. Zero is a number. So if we were to look at an example, if we had an array x and it had four values in it, 10, 13, 16, 19, the, if we said x zero in brackets, that would be 10. That's the first index, right? Zero is the first index. Um, and so one would be the second index, two would be the third index. It's kind of confusing. You'll get used to it. Um, one thing also to note is that uh, both lists and arrays are always designated by these brackets like this. So your values are inside of the brackets, and then your array, you say array x equals inside those brackets. You can also assign um, values to certain indexes using this syntax. I could have changed these values here. And we'll go over that in the future, and uh, that's actually really useful and really cool. So. Let's go ahead and summarize really quickly here. So data types are used to specify to the computer what format of information the user wants. Um, that's really important. We, need to want, we want our data to come back to us in the way we want it. We don't want to have meaningless gibberish. We don't want to have binary. That would really be annoying. So, and then uh, data types come in different sizes and applications. So remember, we have different applications for certain data types. And just to review those data types, we have integers, floating points, booleans, characters and strings, arrays, and lists. So uh, that's the video. Uh, we'll be extrapolating and using these data types in future videos. So make sure that you know the application of each of these data types. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.